People ask a lot what to do with their peg capos when the string breaks, and this is the thing that happens. Uh, hopefully not too often, but it does happen. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of the old string, put a new string in, so that you can use your capo, because a good peg capo is a thing of beauty. First thing I'm going to do is take out the old string, and we'll see sort of how it works by doing that. I'm going to take off the little leather protector thing, right? And that's going to leave this little bit of string exposed. So generally, there's a hole in the back of the capo where the string goes in in the first place. And you just got to shove it through, which is easy or hard depending on the hole. So sometimes it takes a little work just to get the string out. But you know, with my little handy multi-tool, I'm just shoving the string until I see the bit of string here. And then I'm just going to pull this out. Right? So as you can see, there's a knot at the end of that, uh, and we're going to make another knot in a second. So the next thing we have to do is actually get the string out of here, which is usually also a bit of a pain, depending on what kind. The, um, there are some capos that have the string come out on the side of the peg, and that's a little easier to deal with. These capos are... Um, are really well made. They're fantastic. The only issue is that because the knot is inside a little hole in the middle of the peg, it can be a bit of a pain to get it out. So you can try shoving it through. What I usually do is take something pointy, a ballpoint pen, or in this case a little thing from my multi-tool, and just shove that through that way. And then I grab the knot with my handy pliers and pull that through. So now we have three pieces to the capo. Uh, but sometimes this little leather thing is actually attached to the capo. In this case, it's not. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a G string from a guitar, right? The fattest of the nylon strings. And I usually have bits of G string lying around because uh, uh, this is what I use them for. So what we're going to do first is make a knot in one end. And we got to make sure we have a, you know, a pretty good length of, of string here. So we make a knot in one of the ends tighten it up as best we can, but don't worry about tightening it too much because we're going to take care of that in a sec. And then we're going to go back through the bottom of the capo so that the knot goes into this little hole here. So I'm going to put this in here and then I'm going to pull, right? And right now, as you can see, there's some string loose at the end there. But the important thing is the knot has grabbed there. Right? So we're good. If we have one of these loose pieces of uh, leather, in this case it threads this way, you'll you know just take a look before you take it apart to see how yours threaded. Right? And now we have most of our capo put back together. The last thing we're going to do is put the peg onto our guitar string, right, where the rest of the capo is dangling here. Uh, and again, these particular pegs work beautifully, but to get this through here can kind of be a bit of a problem because it bumps into here. So what I do is I put it in halfway and I bend it, right? So now we've got a little bend here. So when I put it back through, it sort of the last little bit bends and hopefully comes out. Uh, in this case, it's not doing that. So I can always take my little tool and just shove that little bit of string through. Right, so now we've got the string coming out here. So we're almost there at this point. We've got the capo itself, the little leather thing to protect the back of the neck, and then we've got the peg. Now, this is the tricky part. We have to determine how long we want the string to be. If it's too long, you're going to get way too much string bunching up at the peg when you start to turn it, right? So you don't want a super, super long thing or you'll actually have too many turns here. I find that if I have two turns or a little, a little bit more than that, uh, that usually gives me the right length. So two turns without a guitar, or maybe two and a half turns, right, gives me basically the right length of string for my capo when it's on the guitar. So what I do now is I note where the string is at the peg, and I pull the peg in this way. Right, so here's where I want my knot. And I make a little knot here. And then I tighten it. So now, when I pull the peg, 
it's all tight. So basically, now we have a capo that works. However, we have some extra string sticking out at either end. What I usually do is I will just let this, I will tighten the capo and just let it sit for a while like this um, to get the knots nice and, and tightened up. But this is basically our capo. So the last thing I'm going to do is clean it up a little so that we can use it. This knot that was in here, I pull it out a little. I take a scissors or something to cut with and I cut off this last little bit here. And now when I pull it, the knot disappears into the capo and we're good. So then I do the same thing on the peg side. I go a little past the knot and I cut the string. And now I have a capo that works again. <laughs> it's easier to do it on a guitar than not on the guitar. Right, so here's our capo with a new string on it, ready to go. And I usually keep a little G-string in my guitar case um, just in case this happens. However, I also have to admit that I keep a Dunlop capo in my guitar case always because if this breaks in the middle of a gig, I usually don't have time to fix it. Uh, I should say that's rarely happened to me and um, I use peg capos pretty much all the time. I love them. 